I'm going to teach you about JavaScript closures in five minutes. Let's go. What's up, everyone? My name is James Hugh Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And I spend a lot of time talking about vanilla JavaScript and core JavaScript concepts. And in this one, I want to tell you about JavaScript closures. Now, closures is something that you hear on interviews. It's a buzzword that I think is kind of intimidating, but it actually is relatively simple. So I'm going to show you all about closures. I'm going to show you how they work in this rock, paper, scissors example. This is actually a challenge that comes from the series Advent of JS, adventofjs.com. You can sign up for the challenges for free and then the solutions are paid. So you can go and get all that there. But I'm going to walk you through some of this stuff with rock, paper, scissors. So I've got my starter files here and uh, it's just an HTML page. And then we can see that there's three buttons here, one for rock, paper and scissors. And I've got this running with the live server extension uh, right here. All right, so here is my app running with the live server extension. You can download that in VS Code. And so what I wanna do is be able to detect which one of these items was clicked. So I could go through and I could get a reference to each one of these buttons individually and add an event listener to each one of those for a click event. But I wanna kinda of consolidate this into something more programmatic and more dynamic. So I'm gonna start out by getting a reference to all of the buttons. So I'm gonna do documents.query selector all. And I'm gonna choose uh, the buttons that are inside of an LI with a class of pick one, just to be kind of specific here. I could just do a uh, general button, but I'll be a little more specific. And then what I wanna do is take each one of these buttons and I wanna call the for each function. Uh, this is gonna iterate through that list of buttons and I wanna get a reference to each button and its index i. All right, so it'll be zero, one, and two for those three buttons. And then for each one of these, I want to add an event listener. So instead of doing them individually, we're gonna iterate through each one of them and call add an event listener. And we'll say we wanna listen for the click event and then inside of this function, this arrow function here, we can grab a reference to E, the event. And what we can do is we can log out E.target. This will give us the DOM element that was clicked here. So let's go and see if this is working. Let's open up our console here. And let's just see if we get these log statements. So there's our rock, our paper, and our scissors. So it looks like that's printing out correctly. Now, if I wanted to differentiate between these two, I could go into uh, the alt property. So I could go uh, e.target.alt, and I could get uh, that text. So rock, paper, and scissors there. But I really only need an index uh, of 0, 1, 2, and 3. And so I could go into the index HTML uh, file here, and I could add like a uh, data index property of uh, 0, 1, and 2, and then I could grab those uh, dynamically in my JavaScript as a property. But the answer is actually right here, and the answer at is, in fact, closures. So because we have our for each here that references the individual button that we're iterating with and then the index, because this callback listener is defined inside of the context or the scope of this i, this add event listener will actually have the ability to reference that I variable. So if I do a console log of I, we will see that uh, if I log this, you'll see zero, one, and two is being logged out. Now this is really, really cool because I'm not having to do any direct access inside of the event listener itself to grab that index or to look at a property of the element. The fact that I have this in the parent scope, the scope of the containing function, it then is available to me inside of this callback that I define. So that is exactly what closures means in JavaScript, where you have a broader scope where some sort of variable is defined. Then inside of that scope, you just define some sort of function. And if you decide to reference one of those variables that's defined inside of the containing scope, the parent scope, it will be available inside of this function as well. So same thing here. If I were to uh, define a property called uh, uh, James, and then we'll just say James is cool for funsies and I log this out, uh, log out name, this is still going to be the same. Even though this is not defined inside of this function, because it's referenced inside of this child scoped function, it will have access to that name property. So one more time, we'll see the name property, James is cool, we'll see the alt, and then we'll have the index there as well. So JavaScript closures is actually hopefully a little bit simpler than you think. If you have any additional questions on what JavaScript closures are or how they work, let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure to check out if you enjoyed this video, if you wanna know how to build out the rest of the Rock, Paper, Scissors Challenge, you can check out adventofjs.com for the entire set of challenges for free and then solutions for the paid product. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below. Appreciate you watching the video and I'll catch you next time.